Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Let's pray and we'll uh, study further about how to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, particularly the gift of prophecy. So let's begin with a word of prayer. And I want to request uh, one of us, anyone either on campus, online batch, kindly lead us, and then we can start off. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this dear Lord Father. We thank you for helping us, O Lord Father, to gather here, O Lord Father, to uh, study and to learn from your word, from your teachings, O Lord Father. Lord, we submit our, ourselves into your hands, O Lord Father. Uh, help us, O Holy Spirit God, to uh, give us a new revelations of understanding the prophetic. And also, Lord, you give us, O Lord Father, how, uh, a practical instructions on how we can uh, apply it in our lives so oh lord father you give us the wisdom we submit everything into your precious hands in jesus mighty precious name we pray amen 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 and thank you thank you prince um we started chapter eight in our notes where we are learning how to activate the gift of prophecy and some basics we have looked at where we said that um all believers can operate in the in all nine gifts of the spirit and we also established that uh, all believers can prophesy we looked at a couple of uh, aspects such as even though the gift is there in us it needs to be stirred up so if there is a neglect of the gift then uh, we can we can uh, probably diminish the or rather we will diminish the flow of the gift or it will not flow as freely or as powerfully as God has intended. We've also seen that gifts can be activated and imparted. That means that even though the gifts are from God and they are pure, there is um, there is this transference that can happen or the developing of the gift that can happen so originally it's from god we cannot give and take the gift but once god gives the gift it uh, can definitely have some sort of a a, a human a, a human uh, involvement in the sense that you know people can train other people on how to flow better in the gifts of the uh, spirit prophecy and all of that so we've discussed that we saw that faith is very important without faith we cannot operate in the gifts of the holy spirit and we saw something very basic the uh, work of a prophetic word from first corinthians 14:3 we saw that it is meant, the simple gift of prophecy is meant for edification, exhortation, and comfort. Uh, and uh, a believer can flow in other aspects such as giving direction, correction, warning from God. But generally, these are seen in the grace gift of prophecy, in the office of a prophet. But when it comes to the basic or the simple gift of prophecy, usually it's the first three that we talked about from 1 Corinthians 14.3. Then we uh, quite elaborately saw that all of us can prophesy. Uh, we saw that prophecy is not about saying everything about a particular person. You know, there could be parts of the message that uh, are spoken. And uh, finally, the, the other aspect that we looked at is all prophecy must be judged. So it's not like anything anyone says uh, is final and then we can make our decisions based on that. So that much we have seen. Now, a few other practical aspects that we are going to look at. So the next one here, I'm on page 132 in our notes. Uh, this section states that how and when we deliver the message is in our control. Uh, we are going to look at two scriptures here, which uh, is also in our notes. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 32 and 33. Could somebody please read it out for us? Two scriptures. 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse 32. And the spirit of the prophets are, are subjected to the prophets. For God was that for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. 
as in all the churches of the saints. Okay, excellent. So that first part there of verse 32 says, spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And this is something to remember. Usually our understanding uh, when it comes to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the flow of the gifts of the Holy Spirit can uh, sometimes be that when the Holy Spirit is working through us, we lose control. Okay, and uh, why do we say this? Because in many settings, we have seen that people may lose control of their 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 body, and you know sometimes they are overwhelmed. Um, and the way the baptism in the Holy Spirit or flowing in the gifts of the Spirit is expressed uh, can be quite varied. You know, uh, so based on this, we feel that whenever the Spirit uh, is stirring us up to say a prophetic word, you know, maybe we, we, we will just get pushed like as if, you know, God is holding us and just like uh, the word is coming out and you cannot keep your mouth shut. And so that kind of a thought is there that if God is speaking, one has to release it and, uh, you know, they cannot hold it. But that's not the fact because verse 32 says the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. Okay, uh, so how we are going to control our spirit or how we are going to deliver the prophetic word is in our hands. Now, somebody could be shaking and they can speak the word. Somebody could be shouting and speak the word. You know, like when it comes to our understanding of, you know, the charismatic, it can be quite crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so like once I remember uh, one pastor, he mentioned that, flowing in the gifts of the spirit it's as if people are uh, shaking rolling hanging on the fans i was like hanging on the fans how can you say that but the point is he was saying we associate it with being out of control you know to an extreme but that's not what the bible says the bible says that the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophets meaning no matter how much i'm filled with the spirit and overflowing with the spirit yes there are some times where we sense that like, you know, you're, you're feeling overwhelmed and you really are not expressing the way you usually do. That happens. That's true. But in general, that, that's, that nature of controlling ourselves is possible. That's what the Bible says. Right? So how we deliver the message. Now, uh, if we are hearing from God and, uh, um, you know, that, that word is a word of correction. Just an example. Now, if I call it out from the pulpit, you know, and, and just shout at someone and say, this is what the Lord is saying to you. You know, your life is sinful. You need to uh, uh, come clean before the Lord and this and that. And if I give this excuse that, uh, no, I felt by the spirit, I could not control the prophetic word just came out. That wouldn't be right because that setting is not the correct setting, isn't it? So even if I'm sensing that word, I will have to think that okay i'm hearing from god but what does the second verse here say it says for god is not the author of confusion but of peace so when i speak like that out of control out of timing it will cause confusion but god is not the author of confusion and so uh, we can exercise our wisdom uh, and uh, operate you know in such a way that we very fitly bring the word at the right time so that is very much possible it's not like flowing in the gifts of the spirit means we are out of control we are not okay uh, and bringing a timely word at the right time proverbs chapter 25 and verse 11 puts it beautifully it says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver a word fitly spoken meaning a right word at the right time is priceless so that is also something that we must develop ourselves in Okay, so we can think and release the word at the appropriate time. That's the point. So if you have any questions or anything to interrupt with, you can always just stop me. Uh, okay, I'll keep moving on. Okay, next one. 
Oh, yes. Okay, there's a question. I I've 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 heard like um, some of the pastors were speaking like this, ma'am. When they were uh, when they filled with Holy Spirit, when they were doing uh, a few things, and and they usually tell we are not like in our uh, what um, in our consciousness. Then very commonly people use this word, right? But but what what in one Corinthians fourteen it was telling subject to problem. Yeah, see, point is, the Holy Spirit will not control us. It it's it feels overwhelming. I'm sure all of us have felt that way at times when you want to minister. It feels like God's presence is taking over you. But you see, it will not override your your abilities that's the point we may feel overwhelmed but we always have the capacity to to be in control you know and uh, yeah that's something we have to practice i suppose yeah yeah like how what what exactly jumping running <laughs> yeah Go shouting ahead. yeah See, we are not saying that, you know, sometimes the expression is beyond us. Like, for example, if uh, I'm the kind of person, I don't show my emotions, but I'm feeling so overwhelmed by the presence of God, maybe I start crying. I can't hold it back. I can't hold back my tears. Or, uh, you know, something else like that. There are also times when the presence of God is so thick, people are not able to stand. Maybe they just sit down or, or something like that. In general, this is like a one-off thing here and there. Right? But overall, overall, we can learn to, to work in that state, in control. Yeah. A Holy Spirit will never, he's a spirit of God who will never uh, control us. Never. You'll never be out of your free will. You'll never be out of that place where you're thinking, oh, somebody is making me do this. No way. But what if, no way. So we can also choose to do it. Exactly. We can also be calm and we can also yeah. walk in it. That's what I'm saying. Correct. See, if I want to share a very powerful prophetic word, okay, that might change somebody's life, I might just say, um, I sense that God would be saying this to you. And that's it. The prophetic word changes their life. Or I can shout at the top of my lungs like, you know, thus says the Lord, this and that. But it, it's totally my thing, my choice, how I want to do it. Yeah. But I can't say, Holy Spirit, God, a hold of me and shook me up. So I just shouted. It's not like that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, not satisfied. Okay, we will continue the questioning later. Uh, now, let's go to the next section. So, prophecy can flow along with other gifts. And this we've already said, right? Little bit prophecy... Um, a little bit of uh, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Everything is happening at the same time. So we can't stop the Holy Spirit from releasing those best gifts which are needed for ministry over that person. So we can be open. And though we know the, uh, the classification, it's just for our benefit. It's not to get so stuck in it that, okay, what is this gift? What is that gift? Don't worry. The person is being blessed. So just keep flowing. Uh, the next one is, do not be too hasty to use, thus says the Lord. So can we use thus says the Lord? We can. But the, the times when we need to use it, uh, we have to be very sure. Because whenever we use terms like thus says the Lord, what we are saying is God is saying, like, don't question it. That's it. Okay. So uh, every time if we say thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, in a way what happens is we are telling people that you can't question it. God said it. 
don't question it got it yeah uh, okay go ahead you can ask even if we go and say a word of encouragement like little word of yes. prophecy it is coming from the lord itself right? correct correct see we are saying it because it's coming from the lord okay that is understood even if we don't say thus says the lord it is from him coming it comes from the lord true it comes from the lord but you see the other aspect is giving people permission to test it so the language that we use also makes a difference so when i put it as see the word is genuine it's from the lord and i'm 100% sure that's why i'm telling the person but what happens is the language if i say yeah uh, i sense this is what the lord would be saying to you or i feel then it gives them permission automatically to think about it maybe look for a confirmation you know to be doubly sure what we said earlier judge all prophecies to be judged okay because also what happens is a lot of people now we are sitting and discussing about prophecy so we are understanding many things but maybe somebody who's walking up to us does not have any understanding the moment we say thus says the lord you know quit your job the person may not think they'll straight away go quit their job got it so people act on the basis of what we are saying and we have to be so careful like you know what they do sometimes it's a, these are life decisions so it is generally better to say i sense i feel uh, i think this is what the lord would be saying to you all that but in a moment where god wants us to speak emphatically let's say you know someone is turned away from the lord and you strongly sense in your spirit i should not say i sense i feel i have to say thus says the lord in that moment say it because then we can grab the attention of that person so that is how we will present it because uh, there can be consequences uh, based on how we present the word okay so any questions about this so yeah please use the mic to discuss this is a this is a real conversation what had happened mm. in in between one pastor one of my uh, in dad's ministry yeah. so uh, so there is a uh, i mean on this prophecy it was it mm. was actually happening mm. so what i said is if it it depends upon the individual who is communicating god is okay. true what he want to tell yeah. he'll communicate huh. but it depends upon the person who is communicating mm. so mm. what he said is what he was asking me is mm. if if god told you something about a person yes so he'll be in control of you right mm -hmm. why you will communicate in a wrong way mm -hmm. god is telling you and yes. god told you to just comfort one person it's yes. it's a prophecy it's not a normal thing correct so if god told you i'll i i want you to quit the job mm -hmm. so if he really told that mm -hmm. so god will be in control of me right when i am speaking with that person also Mm -hmm. so how yeah. come it will go wrong yeah so see uh, what we discussed a little earlier we said that we are in control god is not controlling us to manifest the gift you understood so because god is not controlling us uh, there is this element of human judgment there is the element of uh, human presentation okay so we will look at the following sections a, a little later on where we notice that there can be biases there can be um, you know something that that comes from my uh, fleshly understanding of the pure word of god right and it can actually influence the pure prophetic word which is why we have to allow that space for the prophetic word to be judged so the moment i say thus says the lord what i'm saying is don't question it okay it's it's clear cut it is um, absolute it is perfect don't question it and if it has to do with let's say uh, a very serious decision right then the person will be in trouble so 
see your your uh, underlying point was that god is in control right but what i'm trying to say is the word is from god but god is not controlling us yeah so yes if god wanted to speak something mm -hmm. with me okay so in between he is using you okay so yeah i mean from if if we if we if we understand in this perspective if you think in this perspective mm. god wanted me to know okay then yeah he'll he'll somehow he'll he'll let me know right through you mm. yes so that is what prophecy is isn't it like god speaking through man god is trying to let you know something but what is it that we are now discussing about the accuracy of the word okay um see I, i'm going into sections where we will talk about right motivation right motivation depends on whom is it dependent on god or is it dependent on us yeah right motivation depends on us right presentation depends on us so there are many aspects that depend on us you got it so it's not like in every prophetic word god is controlling every person who's prophesying and it's absolutely correct then everybody must be correct then there's no need to develop and judge and all that so those are the concerns yeah mm. exactly 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 so we look at it we look at the uh um, you know some examples it'll become more clear okay anand but you got the idea right so god is not controlling the whole thing and so uh, we can't be mm. huh. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean we have experienced uh people saying something but that not coming to pass. Um but the thing is like most of us as believers we don't understand that uh maybe the person is hearing it correct but then there are so many other things that come into the presentation. see one classic example that we use is imagine you know we want to prophesy and when we are praying for a person we see musical notes okay we will come to all this later but i'm just telling you if i see musical notes and let's say uh, you know i'm prophesying over one of us and uh, saying that uh, god is going to use you mightily to be a worship leader thus says the lord this and that after everything is over the person says pastor i can't sing what will you do i like he might tell you like i've never sung i just cannot sing and you told me i'm going to be a worship leader is god showing me wrong god is showing musical notes i'm i'm sure 100% sure i'm seeing musical notes so you see what's happening is it's not that the person is wrong but there's an issue in the interpretation maybe that person owns uh uh let's say an instrument shop got it so he does not have anything to do with singing but he's dealing he's selling instruments so that is the right interpretation so there is always a human element which is why the prophecy needs to be judged and human element is not because oh we are wrong we have wrong motivation no sometimes it's a simple issue interpretation was not correct okay so such things that is why uh, saying thus says the lord should be sparing sparingly we must use it fine so let's move on how to release prophecy in the right way so firstly we need to have the right heart proper motivation um there is a scripture first corinthians 14 and verse 12 which says even so you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts let it be for the edification of the church 
that you seek to excel. I think it's self-explanatory. It's just saying that we must not have any personal agenda to promote ourselves or to you know gain fame. See, whenever there are ministries that have to do with uh, standing in front of people, <coughs> if we don't have the right motivation, we could end up deriving our identity from people's approval and you know from the validation that comes from people but that's a very dangerous thing very dangerous thing okay uh, but let's say we want to grow in the gifts of the spirit why do i want to grow in the gifts of the spirit that's the question why there's only one answer so that we can yeah glory of god edification of the church that's the answer so whenever I'm flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, why 1 Corinthians 14, 12, edification of the church. I want to get better and better because I want to edify or strengthen the church, strengthen the believers. That's the idea. Okay. Now, coming to separating our spirit from personal experiences. Sometimes uh, in our ministry, we have certain experiences while praying for people, while um, prophesying. Uh, what happens is that it's really good because we, on the basis of our experience, we can do it more accurately this time. Okay, Maybe we see a similar picture and we are able to interpret it better. So experiences are helpful, but experiences can also be a hindrance and what i mean let me give you some examples for that see based on our life experiences we may um you know interpret wrong if we are not careful for example you know we see a we see a young person who is very passionate about ministry and uh, while we want to input and strengthen that person uh, you know we we are releasing a prophetic word and maybe in our experience let's say my experience i quit my job to serve the lord so if i'm not careful i'll bring my past experience into that prophetic word and i tell that passionate young person god is calling you to quit your job and serve the lord maybe that's not the case that's not needed for everybody right but wherever I go, I may keep using my experience to minister to everyone. So that is the problem. So if we've had a certain experience, uh, or let's say we've had a problem with an authority figure, then in my prophecies, I'm always saying, you can't trust people. You know, you can't trust. You can only trust God. Why am I saying that to everybody? Because that's my personal past experience. And... I feel like that is what everybody's experience is. So then that becomes a problem. So while prophesying, each time, take it as a unique thing that God is sharing. Right? OK, this time, what is God saying? To this person, what is God saying? Uh, and we don't want to be uh, influenced by our past experiences. Then next section here. Separate your spirit from personal prejudices. And we've shared about this earlier. We said, you know, if we have a certain understanding that people who wear such kind of clothes are rich, okay, people who wear this kind of clothes are poor, then we go with that understanding when we are praying, prophesying for them. But that is our personal prejudice. That's not what God may be saying. So we have to be so careful to flow in an authentic way. Who I am, my experience, my bias. Or, you know, here pastor has given one uh, example where uh, maybe a, a lady who's had a, you know, a, a very difficult marriage um, is finding it hard to trust her husband or respect her husband. So if, when she prays for other women, she might say, okay, you know, men are like this, this and that. But that need not be the case. Personal prejudice is affecting 
what's coming out, what is flowing out of our hearts. And it's also affecting the prophetic word. So the, these are things that we need to be very careful about. Uh, or let's say, you know, personal prejudice, carrying a very judgmental spirit. Let's imagine, you know, somebody is a perfectionist and they will accept nothing less than perfect. That's how they've always lived their lives. So even when it comes to relating with people or speaking a prophetic word, maybe at times the word may come across very judgmental. Like until you do this, God will not bless you. Until you do that, you know, God will not bless you. He will not accept your. So judgment, judgment, judgment is always coming from prophecy, like fire, brimstone, uh, like get ready. That's all. It, maybe it's always the case that someone's always speaking judgment. But why is every prophetic word judgment? You know, okay, maybe primarily God is releasing such prophetic words through a person. But is there a personal prejudice involved in that? So these are all reasons why all prophecy must also be judged. So point we are trying to make is the kind of person that we are can affect the prophetic word. I have to be careful. My personality, my experience, my prejudice should not hit, touch the prophetic word it must be released purely yeah uh, on this on this depending upon the way your prejudices you are telling right yes. and uh, is there a like that like uh, depending upon the uh, family situation uh, like some pastors or will tell like uh, i i saw i saw some uh, the things you are going through a few things so God is telling me to tell you to to conduct a seven days prayer, seven weeks prayer. Oh, so they, because mm. of their family, see, this pastor goes to a particular believer's family. Mm -hmm. They'll tell all their problems. Okay. And then this pastor will tell like, God is telling me to just keep seven days prayer, seven weeks prayer, mm. and all these and all will tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, not all of it is uh, yeah. false. Yeah. Prejudice, uh, prejudice, possible, possible. See, if, let's say if they got used to that, then maybe that's what they would say each time, seven days for some. It's good, yeah. Maybe that's from them. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, possible. Yeah, so you see the next part over here, it uh, states, Commit to speaking faithfully or remaining silent. Okay. So there is a passage from Jeremiah 23. We will read two verses. Verse 16, verse 28. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart. Not from the mouth of the Lord. So can a prophet speak something which is not a prophetic word? Yes, it can happen. Verse 28, the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord. So two things. If somebody has a dream, or let's say if somebody has a prophetic word, let them speak the prophetic word. If they don't have the prophetic word, what to do? It says that he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. So here is the test. Uh, Anand, what you asked, right? The test. What is the test? If I have a prophetic word, when I'm praying for a person, I can speak the prophetic word. But suppose I don't have a prophetic word. Then I can speak the word of God. So what you said, pray for seven days, pray for 21 days. It's fine because what a prophet may be doing is just giving them godly wisdom. Like if you pray, your breakthrough will come. Isn't it in the word? It is there in the word. And it, it is also wisdom from our minds. Got it. See, uh, I remember this one uh, experience. So at some uh, some point, like, you know, there was a friend, like, 
she was in a relationship and she was like is it from god is it not from god is it from god i need to hear from god you know that kind of a state and everywhere she was looking for a prophetic word like maybe the uh, they will lay hands on my head and they'll just say yeah this is the right person for you so that was going on so we we all went for one uh, um, prayer meeting where they were prophesying and we had to stand in lines and they were prophesying so one of the ladies there she was so wise she prayed for this girl and she said look i can't tell you because i'm not hearing from god whether this is uh, the right person or not i can't tell you but i can give you the wisdom of god and then she asked her like how old are you uh, you know and uh, what about this person and all and she said okay this time is just not appropriate uh, and that person was an unbeliever by the way so uh, she said look doesn't the word of god say don't be yoked with an unbeliever so I, this is and but good thing is she told clearly she said i'm not prophesying i'm telling you with the wisdom of god's word this is not going to work out for you okay because that's what the word says it's not a prophetic word but i am telling you it won't work out for this this and this reason based on what i know from scripture and she asked i mean that was the prayer time she just prayed the word over the the girl so it's okay we can pray the word also because sometimes god may not say anything new and in this section pastor so beautifully he writes he says the test is not just speaking the prophecy the test is also being silent when there is no prophecy you know do we have that strength in us to remain silent and say actually i didn't get anything from god so let me just so in those moments how to pray for people just pray the word pray the word you know pray the scriptures pray the blessings like that you can just pray and close okay so that is also fine so if you have a dream then speak the dream if you just have the word then speak the word faithfully that's what jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 28 says so we should not get into this uh, you know it's like people are in that mode prophecies have to flow prophecies i mean if only god wants to say something he'll say no and if he is not saying then what can we do we just go with what you already know from the word of god yeah. uh, like the one example you gave like can we get take like this it's it's other than the prophecy god had given all the commandments and all the he told all the ways how to live how to mm. get married to to whom we have to choose we yes. have everything in the word yeah so before we are going out for the prophecy Mm. first we can go to the word exactly right. yeah that's, that's true better. yeah that's true spend a lot of time in the word go to the word first anyway the word is there no like if he never had a an additional word of prophecy his word is already there guiding us and leading us so that's correct okay yeah so that's the thing like if you if we hear from god then speak it otherwise uh speak the word of god but don't say something and simply call it prophecy if it is from my heart then you saw how god says these people they speak their own thing and they make the people worthless that also shows that we are not respecting the people like as if you know they are very foolish we can say anything and get away with that that's not good that's what the word says okay now next section build and maintain godly character see our character our um uh, you know like our mind um all these things matter in ministry not just for prophecy prophecy for anything and everything but especially when it comes to prophecy if my character is uh, godly then what i am sharing can be pure but if my character is not godly let's say fleshly right fleshly let's take one example maybe i have a problem with jealousy okay uh, and a believer in church is so blessed like i'm seeing every time they're coming and saying pastor god is blessing me i'm getting you know this uh, business offer and that and this 
but i am my problem is jealousy so whenever i prophesy you know it can affect my prophecies so when i am or even my prayers when i'm praying for that brother i say uh, yeah god is god blesses but don't rejoice in that <laughs> rejoice that your name is written anything i can say because i am so jealous of that person and what god is doing in their lives but what is happening it's my problem and it's affecting all my ministry i just give one small example right so it can be jealousy it can be hatred it can be anger it can be bitterness it can be rebellion like i i don't believe in submitting to leaders or um, authority figures in my life so whatever i do you can see a little bit of that in in my behavior so you see our character the bible says it's like a vessel okay uh, when we want to drink water we always check right is it a clean glass then we will go fill it up and drink it otherwise the dirt in the vessel will um make the product or you know whatever item that is impure same thing the work of the spirit through our lives the ministry through our lives right if i am not daily in the presence of god in the word and dealing with these issues of my own if i'm not careful enough to do that it will affect people it will start affecting people so same thing is true for prophecy okay so the carnal mind get rid of the carnal mind and uh, ensure that we are not working on the basis of that so that also i think is quite clear so let me just uh, move on to the next section here it says do not base your identity in spiritual gifts uh, we have also spoken about this and we've said you know to to become so attached to the ministry or the gift uh that's that's a very shaky ground you know let's say uh, my identity is uh, pastor like pastor nancy somebody comes and says hey um uh, hello hi nancy i get offended how could you how could you call my name like you should call me pastor nancy right because my identity becomes so attached to my role but you see i'm a pastor only in the church isn't it like if i go outside <laughs> nobody even knows what that means sometimes so then what happens to my security what happens to my identity you know i may start feeling insecure in all other settings because people are not recognizing me <laughs> for my call but that's not how the christian life is supposed to be remember the disciples when they came back to jesus they said we saw uh, satan falling like lightning meaning they did ministry so powerfully that satan was defeated then jesus tells them okay wonderful but don't rejoice in this rejoice that your names are written you know in the in in heaven so what was jesus saying he was saying the fact that i'm a child of god that is what must bring me joy all the time ministry no ministry title no title gift no gift but if we get attached to the prophetic right or, or let's say the prophecy the gift if i feel like everyone should say oh she's so accurate you know she's prophetic she's a prophet she's a prophetess um i mean if if my identity becomes that then it can really affect me the negative way and the people also the negative way okay uh, right so identity work on your identity establish it um, and uh, be rooted in who god says you are uh, the next section i can quickly touch on this we have about 2 minutes so basically it says um, know what the word says and we have discussed how the boundary of god's word will help us be accurate because if let's say we are hearing something which is not of the lord we will be able to check it quickly uh, by the abundance of the word in our hearts when christ dwells in our hearts richly the word says right like abide in 
let, let my word abide in you. That's what Jesus taught us in John 15. So when the word abides in my heart, then I will know whether that is a true prophetic word or not. And especially when we are, uh, you know, seeing things, when God starts to see things, when we talk about interpretation, we'll, we'll come to this. You know, there might be pictures, symbols, um, there might be parables, right? Allegories. So many things are going on in our minds. How do we interpret? I need the word for that. Let's say I see a lion. Okay. Now, lion, how will I interpret the lion? Lion, Satan is like a roaring lion. The lion of Judah, you know, Jesus is a lion of Judah. But based on what is happening in, in that uh, dream or that, that um, you know, communication of God, based on the word, I will be able to interpret. Yeah, I'm seeing a lion and then this, this, this is happening. This is the setting. So this is what God is saying. Because I know the word and the word is clearly showing me how to interpret what I am seeing. So word is so important. Otherwise, if word is not there, no, I'll be like, I'm seeing a lion. <laughs> so like what? I have no reference from scriptures about how to interpret that or what exactly God is trying to say. Yeah. Mm. Is the interpretation for dreams mm. will be in the same way, like mm. the like word how? will be there, and we have to take the word as a bias, like to interpret. We yeah. take the word because if we see when Joseph interprets the dream, mm. he don't have the word actually, yes, but he still interpreted in the correct way. Correct. So, uh. can that also happen now? Because, like, we can interpret dream, mm. and but we can't find any. Thing from the word. Yeah. So uh, that's true, Prince. What I'm trying to say is the word acts as a guide. The imagery, we need to go to the Bible only. Okay. So that is the that is a thumb rule. Use scripture. Whenever we see any image, go to that. But there can be times when you see an image which is not in the Bible. Okay, but uh, we can still be able to interpret it with the boundaries of God's word. For example, you know, like if I see a mobile phone, I have no res reference to a mobile phone in the Bible, but maybe it just means communication. You know what I mean? Uh, but it would still be within the boundaries of God's word. So the image can be more updated. That may happen, uh, but in general, for all interpretation, um, you know, the pictures and all, we go to the Bible as our reference, not any other uh, pictures. Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, great. Great. So uh, we've come to a place in our discussion where I think in the next class hopefully or i am not too sure yeah maybe next class also we we will have to discuss some of the um, aspects and the class after that which would be next friday we can have a session no no next next week uh, yeah so next friday um, you can all prepare yourselves in prayer. We'll just take some time to flow in the prophetic uh, in our class. So then we can understand better how to interpret, how to release a word of prophecy. Okay, great. So fine. Let's wrap up then. Let's wrap up uh, with the word of prayer. Again, I request one of us to please lead in prayer and then we can close. Father God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. God, whatever we learned, you help us to flow in the prophetic and you help us to learn more of uh, more from the word so that we can learn in the prophetic correctly, God. We surrender each of you into your hand and uh, we give praise and glory to you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Amen. And thank you. Thank you, Shirada. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a great day and a wonderful day.